Um, you're starting to get the um, idea now. I think the next one's Thursday. Okay. Oh yeah. Question. Oh yeah. It's gonna. We'll talk about the overall shape once we've got it. Okay. Um, Thursday. What are we adding on? It's 4,000, so 15,000 plus 4,000 gives us cumulative frequency of 19,000, which gives me a percentage. Did I get the right number of zeros there? Did you say 76? Yeah. 76%. So 7 and 8, so it's going to be about there. Okay. And you can keep on going. You can see that the gaps are getting smaller and smaller. Why is that, by the way? Why are the gaps getting smaller and smaller? Because I'm adding increasingly small numbers, right? So you can see this getting this curved shape. Can you complete it, please? Okay, and you'll know you did it right if your final one for Wednesday, you should know without any calculations where the data point should be. Should be 100% because it includes everything. Okay. So go ahead and complete your data for me. Get those dots on there and I'll tell you what to do with them. This out more this Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna have to decode this one. <laughs> Some interpretation required. Listen, Zach, I don't remember what I said. Yes. Thursday by itself is four thousand. We add that on because it's cumulative frequency. We add that four thousand onto all of the previous ones. So it's 15 plus 4, which gives you 19,000. Is that okay? If you've um, finished putting those dots on, can you just call me over? I just want to have a quick look. No. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Yep, sure. So what we're doing is this thing here, it's cumulative frequency percentage. So we say, okay, what percentage of total cells is this day? And the answer is it's 8,000 out of the total, which we work out is 25,000. If you add up every single one of the columns, 25,000 in the week. So this one will be 8,000 divided by 25,000. What percentage is that? Turns out to be 32%. So on the left, sorry, the right hand side, um, instead of going up by thousands of dollars, we go up by percentages. So it's like, can you see my scale on the right hand side there? 10%, 30%, etc. cetera? Okay. So the first dot you can see here, that represents 32%. And then the next one, it's cumulative, not just frequency. So I get bigger and bigger and bigger. I keep on adding each day's sales. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, can I get your attention again, please? So hopefully by now, you have most if not all of these data points, the cumulative frequency percentages graphed on. Here's the last part that will complete the Pareto chart. Okay, We're going to take these and we're going to join them up into a, uh, a polygon of sorts. Okay, Just straight lines will do. So I'm going to go from Saturday to Sunday, from Sunday to Thursday, uh, Thursday to Tuesday, and you get the I. Dear. You end up at 100%. Okay. Now, um, why do we do these things? Uh, they are actually quite confusing to look at the first time because you've got this data overlaid on data about itself and it can be quite complicated. Right at the beginning we said this is all about identifying what are the most important factors in this situation. They don't have to be days of the week. They could be, for example, you know, which cities or which suburbs in Sydney you know, have the highest crime rate. You order them right and then you can say oh I can add up and work out cumulative frequency um, where do the traffic accidents happen most frequently which intersection you work out what percentage you add them up and then you get this same kind of curve now uh, why does this matter okay well the answer is when you're trying to make decisions often you want to make decisions in light of what's the most important when do I put on the most staff where do I allocate police or doctors and nurses or all those kinds of things, right? Now, there's a really nice way, a summary of all this that shares the same name as this chart, the Pareto chart. It's called the Pareto Principle. You can um, check this up later. And um, I'd love you to write it down and I'll give it to you in a really succinct form. I'll try and show it to you on this data as well. The Pareto Principle is that 20% of the causes in whatever situation you look at, 
20% of the causes in a situation lead to or result in 80%, that's a zero, of the effects. Um, you'll sometimes hear, hear this called the 80-20 effect, okay? 20% of your clients account for 80% of your sales. 20% of your intersections account for 80% of your accidents. So what it does is it helps you, you know, allocate attention, human resources or physical resources more appropriately in your situation. Okay? Now the way you can actually read this off of the graph, appropriate color, is to find where's 80%. On your cumulative frequency. Okay, so on mine, uh, coincidentally, not coincidentally, my 80% lines up with my 8 over here. I just chose a convenient scale for myself. So if I map that across, um, hopefully this rings some bells from things we've done in the past because it's very much like how we found the median using our OGIVE, our cumulative frequency polygon. Where does this match up to? And the answer is, well, somewhere in here, right? So 20%, very roughly speaking, of the days in the week account for 80% of your sales. And you could obviously drill down to this further, maybe instead of just days, you want to know like what time do people come up? They come around lunchtime generally, if you've got a food court. And so these kinds of things help you make better decisions, okay? So these Pareto charts, there's a bit more to unpack about them, but we want you to recognize what happens when you've got this bar chart on top of this cumulative frequency percentage. It's so useful, it gets its own name because it's quite frequently used. See what I did there? Anyway. Questions? Any questions about this? Does it make sense? Yes. So well explained. Sir. Yeah, uh, okay. Sorry. First question from Sarang. Yeah? Can you quickly explain how you did the cumulative frequency again? Yes, absolutely. Okay. This is the crucial part. So I will say it again. I, I sort of, <laughs> I left off. I did a terrible, terrible draw. Step two, stuff happens. Okay. So I will, um, I'll even write it down for you. Okay. So Step one, you place it in order. Do you remember that? Did the bar graph. The second thing we did was we calculated this. Do you remember that? Okay. So we calculated our total frequency. Total sales. Total sales in this case. It might be total accidents, total number of patients, whatever. Okay. You calculate the total frequency. And then you use that total frequency to work out your cumulative frequency percentage. There's two parts of that. Cumulative frequency and then the conversion to the percentage. So let's do the cumulative frequency. This thing here, right? You're doing it in order. You include that day's sales, patients, frequency, and then you add on whatever all the previous days are as well. So that's why this one includes the 7,000 on Sunday and the 8,000 on Saturday. This one includes the 4,000 on Thursday and everything from the previous days. The, what am I up to? The 2000 on Tuesday and all the previous days. That gives you the cumulative frequency. And then the last step, the one you asked about is, take these numbers, what do we divide by each one? We divide by the total frequency, right? Divide by total frequency, and that gives us the cumulative frequency percentage. Make sense? So divide by total frequency. So 8,000 over 25. 8,000 over 25,000, then 15,000 over 25,000. We're always comparing to the total sales. Um, we don't need to times it by anything. You'll get 15,000 divided by 25,000 will be 0 0.6, which is 60%. Uh, 19,000 divided by 25,000 will be 0 0.76, which is 76%. Make sense?